Have you ever wanted to explore the depths of our oceans but didn't have millions of dollars to buy a deep sea ROV and charter a ship? Me too! Today I'm going to show you how, with just a thousand feet of nylon twine, a gallon of cooking oil, a ten dollar camera, a twelve dollar flashlight, a Tupperware, and a million dollar ROV. The idea is that if I replace all the air in the camera and flashlight with cooking oil, which won't hurt the electronics, it won't compress under the pressure of the water and it'll survive. You see, solids and liquids don't like to compress under pressure, but gases do. So when those gases start changing volume, things start crushing and that's where problems happen. So if there's no gases, there's no problems. But that's the thing. I don't know if there won't be any problems. There could be voids inside the individual electronic parts inside the camera, or there could be changes to the electrical properties because of the pressure. My hope is that the camera and flashlight are so cheap and simple that there will be less points of failure and that will give me an edge. Quality. To test it, I'll be putting the whole apparatus in the deepest water I can possibly find. But it turns out finding deep water is really hard or really expensive. Ooh. Ah. Nope. I first tested this idea on an 80 foot deep lake by renting a kayak. The results were so promising that I continued developing the idea and then forgot about it and got distracted by life for the next three years. The main objective of that test was to see if the electronics could function under any sort of large pressure change. And they did. Well, sort of. When I brought the camera back up, the footage was really blurry. I had a couple theories as to why it got blurry. The most promising one was that the oil got onto the camera sensor and drained off partially but not all the way and kind of left an oily smudge like when you put your thumb on the camera lens and leave a fingerprint. It turns out I was on the right track, but not quite there. I took the glass protective cap off of one of my cameras and submerged it in oil to make sure there was no smudge, but it was just as blurry. And then it hit me. You know how when you open your eyes underwater without goggles and everything's super blurry? Well, the same thing happens to cameras and oil for the same physics reasons. Now, there are a couple ways to fix this. In one method, I could take the camera and make a corrective lens, essentially making glasses for my camera, which would be really difficult. Or I could take the camera component, stick it in a block of epoxy, leaving the camera sensor in air, and avoid this problem entirely. Fixed! Well, mostly fixed. Working with epoxy is difficult. I no longer have access to the 80 foot deep lake that I used to test the first time, so I'm going to have to find somewhere else. The next best option, Seneca Lake, is not close, so I can't really test it much on my budget. Uh-oh, would you look at that? There's a holiday I forgot about, which means I have time to go test this. I sure hope everything is ready. Uh, I sure hope everything is good enough. Yeah. All right, let's go. I forgot to get footage of the drive for this part. So here's the plan. We're gonna paddle about a mile out into the center of Seneca Lake, where it's about 630 feet deep, turn on the equipment, submerge everything in oil, tie it all up, and then throw it overboard. Now I'm gonna make a note here. One camera can see quite well, the other cannot. So I faced the camera without cataracts, towards the flashlight beam, so it'll get a good image of the bottom. This is the quality of the good camera. And this is the quality of the bad camera. 
Say hi to the camera, you're so blurry. Just for reference. And now you can see none of that mattered because both cameras got shaken around violently while descending because I didn't tie them down to the bottom of the cage. I probably should have seen that coming. Because of this, I'm mainly going to focus on the footage from the bad camera, because the good camera settled into a position facing straight up into the foggy lid of the container and into the inky black depths above the whole apparatus, where it could see nothing. Although it is pretty cool, if I turn up the brightness of the camera image all the way, I can actually see where it loses all incoming light and it's just camera noise. And also when it hits the bottom because some of the sediment reflected light and I guess it picked it up. All right, back to the journey from the camera's point of view. It took eight minutes for the camera to hit the bottom. Eight minutes, that's insane. It was sinking for eight minutes. Can you imagine falling for eight minutes? I cannot. From the boat, I realized it hit the bottom when the line went slack. The great thing is, you can really tell it hit the bottom from the bad camera view. But that right there is really crappy footage of the bottom of Seneca Lake, 630 feet down, under 270 pounds per square inch of pressure, or 18 atmospheres. But none of that matters, because it's in vegetable oil. It works, at least in 630 feet of water. And now, what was for me the worst part of the entire project, reeling in hundreds of feet of twine with a five pound weight at the end, while it's dragging underwater. I spent an hour pulling this thing back to the surface. <laughs> I'm kind of euphoria. A little oh. euphoria, right? <sighs> it took 57 minutes to reel back in. Almost an hour. Not to mention that the wind had picked up to 10 to 15 miles an hour with 30 mile an hour gusts, which being in a canoe was a little scary, but we got back safe and sound. Next, I wanna use an improved version with a clear image and maybe send it down into deep sea water or the lake again, cause, and I definitely wanna use something mechanical or electrical to reel it back in. If you want to support this project, let me know in the comments, and if this video does well enough, I might open a Patreon or something. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.